In this tutorial in Cyberlink PowerDirector, we'd like to give you some tips on designing your own moving lower third. There are some nice lower thirds built into PowerDirector version 16. I'd like to look at them for a second before we show you why you might want to build your own. If I click in the title room and then drag down their alphabetical to L, I will find that I have eight potential lower thirds or lower titles. If I click on one of them uh, in the preview screen, I can see what it's going to do. I find that four of them follow basically a one design pattern. And then the other four follow a second design pattern. And to apply any of these uh, to your footage, all you need to do is to treat it like any other title and drag it down to a track, uh, preferably below your video. And now all you have to do is change the text. So if I click here on the lower third, I can go ahead and edit the text. Uh, I have my particle, which is part of the lower third, and then I have my text. So I can change this any way I want to. If I turn the particle off, all I happen to see now when I do the preview is the text. So it's the particle that's giving you all the nice fancy features uh, that you might want in that particular uh, pre-designed lower third. That's what the particle here is doing. So uh, those are the ones that you have that are default. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. One of the problems is if I only have uh, eight and they basically follow two primary designs, unless I want that lower third to be the dominant one in all of my footage, I have to figure out a way to do others. Now you can buy them or you can design them. Let me show you a very simple way of designing some simple moving lower thirds all on your own. We're going to use color boards to do that. We have some exercises that show you a little bit about it, but we'd like to put some some of the skills together in this particular tutorial. So what we're going to do is we'll take a color board. I'll click from media content, go to my color board, and I need to des decide how I want my lower third to be designed. Well, the first thing I want to do is I, I, I want a white color board. So I'll take and drag this down. And right now it looks like my default duration, if I click on duration, is 5 seconds. Let's change that to 10. Okay, now I have a 10 second color board. I'm going to double click on it. And then you notice I've put on a pretty extensive grid. To do this, you simply click on the box below the preview window and cl click on grid lines and then you choose whatever one you want. I'm using an 8 by 8 that will give me even more uh, options. I could even maybe use a 10 by 10. So what I'm going to do is take this white and uncheck maintain aspect ratio. And then I'm going to say, well, I want the color board to have a white edge on the very top. So I'm going to move it just above this dotted line and I don't want it to go all the way to the left. So I'll just make this a very small color board. And this one now is done. I'll click on OK. Now the second thing I want to do is I want to pick my main color for my color board. Let's pick something uh, in the dark blue range here. And I'm going to make this overlay so it has to be in a lower track. And we'll drag it to fit the same duration. And then we go ahead and edit this. And let's go ahead and decide that we want to turn off the maintain aspect ratio. We'll go down about this far. We'll go in about the same degree. And we'll move it about, let's see, I want, I don't want to move it. I want to shrink it about maybe to here. A little, little short of the line, just barely. Okay, and so that's the second component. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because I just want a hint of white here. I don't want it too thick. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is pick another color yet. Uh, let's say we want to use uh, maybe even a black. 
and I have a black color and we'll overlay the last area with black and we'll double click on it turn off maintain aspect ratio and then we'll make this very small and it will just barely cover the bottom of my color board and we'll narrow it okay click on okay now I have a color board that ha has the appearance of a little bit of dimension to it I'm gonna click here and go ahead and play so now I have something that's not too bad now the other thing that I'd like to show you how to do with this is how to add motion to it what we need to do is decide how we're going to move it in from the right and we're going to have it freeze at this location I'm going to do this on one of the color boards and then we'll stop the recording but you you write down what you do and do it the same on all three so let's pick the blue since that's the most common part and so what I'm going to do is keyframe that. Let's say that we want it to be on the screen in its current location uh, at about uh, 20, 22 frames. Okay, to about two thirds of a second. And so I'm going to click here and I'm click my position indicator and that will set a keyframe. Then I go back to the beginning of the clip and I'm going to set another position indicator that sets my diamond keyframe but now that I have it set in that location I'm simply going to move the color board all the way off the screen from the right and in this case I'm using the arrow key because it keeps it perfectly horizontal I can use the mouse if I want to and then make sure that my Y coordinate is 0.803 so now I have this one taken care of. So if I click on OK, we go ahead and play the clip and you'll see the one component move in. All right, and it looks nice. Now the next thing we'll have to do is keep those same uh, coordinates and do a keyframe on the black and on the white. I'll do that and then we'll pause while I'm uh, creating that. Now that we've keyframed each of the three color boards, let me play the clip and you'll see what we have so far. It all comes in like one piece, but we didn't buy it, we simply changed it. Now the nice thing about this feature is that you can also change the colors as often as you want. So you can make as many as you prefer. You can change the length of it and other kinds of features, but that gives you a little bit of a three-dimensional color board. The next thing you would want to do would be go ahead and put some text on this. And all I need to do is go back to my title room, I'll click on my text, drag it down to a lower track, and uh, then go into my edit mode. And we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll, uh, we have to position it here when the color board's on the screen. And we'll go ahead and edit this as we pause. I've put two pieces of text in the title designer. And we have exercises showing you how to do that, but let's go ahead and play the beginning here. So that would be an example of how to do something like this. Let me give you one more point. If you want to add even a little more pizzazz to this, all you need to do is add a flare. So what I'm going to do is I've set a keyframe about 23 seconds into the project and I'm going to have a flare start in the upper left corner and then go all the way to the right. So I go to my uh, PIP designer room or press the F5 key, drag down to some of the lens flares that I have. Uh, let's take this lens flare 3. I'll drag it down and I'm going to drop it in this case between the white and the blue. So it will be behind the blue but in front of the white. And so all I need to do now that I have it there, let's make it uh, go the duration of the clip. I'll double click on it to edit it. Uh, first thing I want to do is I'm going to shrink it down. And let's say maybe I want it about that size. And then we're going to reposition it right in the upper left corner. Now I will keyframe it. 
I'm going to start it there. So the keyframe and the position scale for my flare. Okay, and then that, that's set. Now I move my keyframe to the end. Now I set, set it over here at 741. Good. And that sets another keyframe. Let me make sure I have this right. We'll move the playhead back here. We'll preview this. And now you see it crawling across the top. And I could layer it anywhere I want to uh, in my uh, lower third. But that's not bad. So I'll click on OK. And so now when I look at everything done in movie mode, we have our clip. Comes on the screen. We have our text. We have our little flare. And uh, we can go ahead and enjoy our moving, highlighted lower third that we made all on our own.